Telia Crater was one of the earliest known members of the Ave Metatarsalians, the dinosaur and pterosaur branch of the archosaurs. Its fossils have been known for over 80 years, but it was only very recently given an official name and classification following the discovery of additional specimens in 2015. It turned out to be rather different from what paleontologists had expected an early birdline archosaur to look like. Instead of being a bipedal basal dinosaur-like animal, Teleocrater was actually a quadruped with more crocodilian-like limbs and oddly elongated neck vertebrae. Targadia was first considered to be an indeterminate early archosaur, then a non-archosaurian dosweliid. But new fossil material and a recent analysis have instead placed it as a member of the Erpidosuchids, an early group of Pseudosuchians. They were some of the earliest well-armored archosaurs, with several rows of bony osteoderms along their neck, back and tail, and scattered oval osteoderms covering their limbs. Smaller Erpidosuchids are speculated to have been specialized for insect eating, but something the size of Targadia probably couldn't have survived on a purely insectivorous diet, and it must have been doing something else with its weird jaws. Pseudosuchia is one of two major divisions of Archosaur, including living crocodilians and all archosaurs more closely related to crocodilians than to birds. They are also informally known as crocodilian line archosaurs. Despite Pseudosuchia meaning false crocodiles, the name is a misnomer as true crocodilians are now defined as a subset of the group. Argonosuchus is considered a carnivore due to its large, knife-shaped teeth. Reconstructions of the jaw musculature of Venedicosuchus showed that it had a slow, strong bite, similar to those of herbivorous aetosaur such as Desmodosuchus. Venedicosuchus and other ornithosuchids were likely specialized scavengers, due to a combination of features which suggested that they ate meat but were poorly adapted for dealing with living prey. Despite this relationship to crocodiles, Ornithosuchus was able to walk on its hind legs, like many dinosaurs. Because the long hind legs were directly underneath the hips Ornithosuchus was easily able to attain a bipedal stance. However it's more likely that the typical resting its posture was quadrupedal, with bipedal posture only taking over when it was chasing after and attacking prey. Its skull also resembled those of theropod dinosaurs, but its more primitive features included the presence of five toes on each foot and a double row of armored plates along the animal's back. Much smaller than some of the other Pseudosuchians and early theropod dinosaurs Ryojasuchus lived alongside. Its front limbs were shorter than its hind limbs and it was probably a facultative biped, moving slowly on all fours, but getting up on just its hind legs for bursts of high-speed running which would have helped it avoid being eaten by those larger predators. Its jaws were capable of delivering strong but somewhat slow bites, and the relative structural weakness of its narrow-notched jaw would have made it difficult for it to deal with large struggling prey. It likely mostly hunted smaller vertebrates, and may also have been an opportunistic scavenger taking bites out of larger predators' kills whenever it got the chance. To begin with, one of the most interesting facts about Revultosaurus is that the genus was first believed to have represented a very primitive Ornithischian dinosaur. This is because when it was first discovered the genus was only described by teeth, and these were very similar to these animals. It was not until skull and post-cranial skeletal remains were discovered that Revultosaurus was realized to actually be a Pseudosuchian, and not a dinosaur. Its teeth are serrated in a fashion similar to the herbivorous Ornithischian dinosaurs, and so it is reasonable to assume that it also had a herbivorous preference. Etosaurus was a small, primitive etosaur. Unlike more derived Aetosaur, the carapace was long and narrow and lacked spikes. The paramedian scuts that covered the back are considerably wider than they are long. 
The lateral scuts, which are beneath the paramedian and formed a row on either side of the animal, do not bear any spikes or other projections. A 2023 study based on a fossil assemblage, suggested that juvenile specimen were likely gregarious animals, possibly to increase their chances of survival and to deter predators. Paratypothorax records are relatively few and widely dispersed when compared to the much more extensive fossil records of some of the other Etosaur genera. Thus, it is difficult to advocate precise and robust biostratigraphic correlations based on paratypothorax. Particularly important as well is the possibility that more than one species of paratypothorax existed, as much of the known material is so incomplete that species-level assignment is entative at best. It possesses paramedian scuts that are wide, strap-like, and have grooves and pits on them forming radial patterns. Staganolepis was about 3 meters long. It was a quadrupedal animal covered in thick armored scales that ran down the length of its body. A slow-moving browser, it would have used this heavy body armor to repel attacks from contemporary thecodont carnivores. It had a very small head for its size, it was only 25 centimeters, accounting for less than 10% of the total body length. It had no teeth in the front of its jaws, but instead had a beak-like tip that arched upwards. This would have allowed it to uproot plants in a similar manner to a modern pig. The peg-like teeth at the back of its mouth would have been suitable for chewing tough vegetation. Etosaur remains were first discovered in the early 90th century, although the very first remains that were described were mistaken for fish scales. A. Etosaur are later recognized as crocodile relatives, at which point they were interpreted as semi-aquatic scavengers closely related to phytosaurs. Subsequent work has established that A. Etosaur were entirely terrestrial animals, and were likely herbivorous to some extent. Some forms have characteristics that may have been adaptations to digging for food. Desmatosuchus is one of the better-known Aetosaur that were squat quadrupedal archosaurs that fed upon low-growing vegetation. The key area that it is perhaps most famous for is the armor along its back. All Aetosaur had bony armor down the length of their backs to provide some protection from predators that could rear up and attack them from above but Desmatosuchus took this protection even further with the addition of two 45-centimeter spikes that projected sideways from above its shoulders. The spikes that ran down its upper flanks certainly would have made attacks from predators more difficult, but how much protection the larger spikes gave remains uncertain. Mamboakale would have been a large and terrifying predator, which roamed across Tanzania some 245 million years ago. At around 5 meters long, it's one of the largest predators that we know of from this period. It is characterized by several cranial autopomorphies that allow it to be distinguished with confidence from all other Mandabeds archosaurs. Phylogenetic analysis suggests that it is an early diverging Pseudosuchian, but more precise resolution is hampered by missing data. Known from the Middle Triassic of China, Lotosaurus reached sizes of about 2.5 meters long. Despite the scarcity of fossil remains for other sail-backed stem crocs, it is actually known from multiple complete skeletons in a mass bone bed. Its vertebrae formed a long, relatively low sail along its back, which may have looked more like a hump in life, while its tiny head and toothless beaked jaws suggest it was an herbivore, or possibly a shellfish eater, based on its powerful bite and wetland habitat. Arizonosaurus is the only Tenosaurisid known from substantial remains. At about 3 meters long, it was probably an apex predator within the local ecosystem. Its limb bones haven't been found, 
so it's not clear whether it was quadrupedal or bipedal. Sailbacks formed from elongated vertebrae have convergently evolved multiple times since at least the Permian, also known in fossil temnospondyl amphibians, synapsids, and many different dinosaurs. Just what these sails were for is still a subject of debate. Although the classic explanation for them is body temperature control, it's not clear how useful they actually were for this purpose, and no living species seem to use theirs for thermoregulation. Bromscrovia was a carnivorous archosaur from the Middle Triassic. It was a member of the Tenosauricidae, a family of crocodilian line archosaurs that are noted for their lack of osteoderms, remarkably dinosaurian appearance, and the presence of lengthened vertebrae that would have supported a sail in life. Bromscrovia itself is not well known, only known from a few vertebrae and hip bones. Ephigia is noted for its remarkable similarity to ornithomimid dinosaurs. Its similarity to ornithomimids represents a case of extreme convergent evolution. Examination of its jaws suggest it nipped and sheared off vegetation when feeding, due to its weak jaws and sharp beak. It was previously suggested that it pecked for food like ostriches or other ratites, but biomechanical studies have estimated that its skull could not withstand such forces. Apparently, modern crocodilians possess the same basic feather-building genes as birds, but they're suppressed in favor of scales during embryonic development. This raises the distinct possibility that fuzzy protofeathers are ancestral to all archosaurs, and that some of the incredibly varied croc-line fossil critters might even have been just as fluffy as their dinosaur cousins. Later study particularly the description of the genus Ephigia in 2006, has now yielded the conclusion that Shuvasaurus is not actually a dinosaur, but a form of Rauisuchian. Because the mouth is beaked and toothless, it is difficult to establish what kind of diet Shuvasaurus had, since a beaked mouth could be used for either a carnivorous or herbivorous diet, possibly even both. The species name Inexpectatus is a reflection of the unexpected nature of the find. The individual of Psilosuchus to which the original specimen belonged had an estimated length of about 3 meters however, other remains could possibly indicate that it could grow much larger. It had several unique features compared to its relatives. The neck and back vertebrae had large excavations or pockets on the side, an unusual trait that assisted paleontologists in assigning the giant cervical vertebra to Psilosuchus rather than Sorosuchus. Regardless of what the adult size of Prestosuchus was, it was without doubt an apex predator that would have targeted other reasonably large animals. Rauisuchians like Prestosuchus are usually seen as ambush predators, rearing up and delivering a strong bite to the back of a target animal. Evidence does actually support his, as the aforementioned 2010 specimen of Prestosuchus was found in sedimentary rock that has been perceived to have been a watering hole for local wildlife. Ambush predators are known to haunt such locations as inevitably prey species will come to them in order to drink. Analysis of Sorosuchus bite indicated that its jaws were relatively weak. The bite strength was determined to be most similar to the modern gharial in regards to strength, or around 1015 to 1885 newtons due to its relatively thinner bones compared to those of the theropod dinosaurs that would later supplant it suggesting that it would feed largely on softer food such as flesh and vital organs from its prey, which it would process with its rear teeth. This avoidance of bone also would have left more meat for scavengers to feed on after Sorosuchus had finished with a meal. The Eschigualasto formation near it has been found was dominated by fluvial and floodplain environments with strongly seasonal rainfalls. The locality where Batrachotomus lived was a swampy region and the name comes from the Greek batrachos, for frog, and tome, for slicing, which refers to its preying on the large amphibian Mastodonsaurus. In contrast with sprawling reptiles, like crocodiles, 
this large carnivore was very agile with locomotor superiority due to its erect stance. A remarkable feature seen on its back was a row of paired, flattened bony plates. It was possibly an early relative of Postosuchus, which lived during the dawn of the dinosaurs. The head of Postosuchus was deep with many fenestri, adaptations that point towards powerful biting muscles. The teeth were serrated and large growing to at least 7 cm. Fossil evidence suggests that Postosuchus also had a vomeronasal organ, an auxiliary organ for smell. The hide appears to have been armored with preserved specimens displaying evidence of osteoderms which would give it a crocodilian appearance. Its forelimbs are a little over half of the total length of the rear legs and this has led to a lot of speculation as to whether Postosuchus was bipedal or quadrupedal. The tough hide and large jaws carried forward of the hips would have required plenty of support for long-distance travel. Further the pectoral girdle was strong suggesting a weight-bearing function. Mandasuchus would have been a predator of other terrestrial animals, possibly up to equal size to itself. The ascending process of the maxilla, which lies in front of the antorbital fenestra, is short and very thin. This process is also uniquely diagonally oriented when seen from above, with its rear edge set inwards from the front edge. The only preserved tooth is thin and serrated. One of the apex predators of late Triassic Germany, Pterodosaurus was originally thought to have been an early, primitive theropod dinosaur due to the similarities of the jaws and teeth to predatory theropods of the original specimen. It was found, however, to be a Rauisuchid with a superficial resemblance to theropod dinosaurs and a close cousin to the well-known Postosuchus. Pterodosaurus was a powerful predator with a large head, jaws and teeth, and would have preyed on the various sauropodomorphs and large dicynodonts in the area. Hesperosuchus was a terrestrial animal, where its speed and ability to run fast is the most advantageous as a fitness trait. Northern Arizona's landscape during the Triassic period was surrounded by numerous bodies of water like lakes and streams. This supports that Hesperosuchus likely lived close to water although being a full-on land-dwelling animal. The ganoid scales found in the general area where it was found belonged to freshwater fish of the Triassic period, belonging to the genus Lepidolus, which lived in shallow lakes and streams. Terrastrisicus was a small crocodilomorph that was well suited to life on land. The legs were fairly long and supported the body from underneath rather than from the sides and the feet were digitigrade, meaning that it walked on its toes. This meant that Terrastrisicus was a fairly quick and agile predator of small organisms like insects and lizards. Numerous fossils are known from fissures in limestone karst which made up the islands it lived on, which formed caverns and sinkholes that preserved the remains of Terrastrisicus and other island-living reptiles. As an early crocodilian relative, Protosuchus skull featured more crocodilian characteristics than its earlier ancestors, it had short jaws that broadened out at the base of the skull, providing a large surface to which its jaw muscles could attach. This increased the maximum gape of the animal's mouth and the force with which the jaws could be closed. The body was covered and reinforced by osteoderms in a double row along the back and covering the bottom of the body and the entire tail. It was an unusual quadrupedal reptile whose legs were columnar, with the rear legs longer than the front legs. Its five toes were clawed and it is believed that they were good runners and good swimmers. Thalatosuchia is a clade of marine crocodilomorphs from the early Jurassic to the early Cretaceous that had a cosmopolitan distribution. They are colloquially referred to as marine crocodiles, though they are not members of Crocodilia and records from Thailand and China suggest that some members lived in freshwater. The clade contains two major subgroupings, the Teleosoroidea and Metriorhynchoidea. 
Teleosauroids are not greatly specialized for oceanic life, with back osteoderms similar to other crocodiliforms. Steniosaurus has been used as a wastebasket taxon for Thaladosuchian fossils for over two centuries, and almost all known historical species of Teleosauroid have been included within it at one point. Teleosaurus had highly elongate jaws, similar to those of a modern gharial. It had a long, slender, body, with a sinuous tail that would have helped propel it through the water. Its forelimbs were remarkably short, and would probably have been held close to the body when swimming to improve the animal's streamlining. Unlike modern crocodilians, it lived in the open ocean, and it probably caught fish and squid with its sharp, needle-like teeth. Metriorhynchids displayed extreme adaptions for life in the open ocean, including the transformation of limbs into flippers, the development of a tail fluke and smooth, scaleless skin, and probably gave live birth, seemingly uniquely among archosaurs. Geosaurus was a carnivore that spent much, if not all, its life out at sea. No eggs or nests have been discovered, so little is known of the reptile's life cycle, unlike other large marine reptiles of the Mesozoic, such as plesiosaurs or ichthyosaurs which are known to give birth to live young out at sea. Where Geosaurus mated, whether on land or at sea, is currently unknown. Dacosaurus was the only marine crocodiliform to have evolved teeth that are both lateromedially compressed and serrated, not only that, but they were much larger than those of Metriorhynchid genera. These characteristics, analogous to modern killer whale teeth, indicate that it was an apex predator. The incomplete skull specimens from the Mexican species preserves the chamber in which the well-developed salt glands would have been housed. All currently known species would have been large, measuring approximately 4 to 5 meters long and weighing around 250 kilograms its body was streamlined for greater hydrodynamic efficiency, which along with its fin tail made it a more efficient swimmer than modern crocodilian species. The teeth of Plesiosuchus are still large and could have been put to work on anything from large fish to even other marine reptiles. It is also one of the largest metriorhynchids, and with the largest known individual measuring just under 7 meters in length, Plesiosuchus is comparable to the larger pliosaurs of the time and location, such as Pliosaurus and Liopleurodon. Metriorhynchus is one of the better-known marine crocodiles with features that show it was more at home in the water than on the land. The legs have evolved to become more like flippers, and the tail sports evidence of a tail fluke. It is likely that the tail provided primary locomotion in the water with the legs being used for maneuvering. One strong piece of evidence to suggest that Metriorhynchus spent most of its life in the water is the presence of salt glands. These salt glands are found in many marine animals and work by extracting excess salts from the blood so that they can be excreted externally in a concentrated form. By having an active gland constantly removing salt from the blood, marine creatures, including Metriorhynchus would have been able to drink seawater as well as eat other marine animals that would have had a higher salt content than land animals. All currently known Crocosaurus species would have been 3 meters or less in length. When compared to living crocodilians, it can be considered moderate to small-sized. Its body was streamlined for greater hydrodynamic efficiency, which along with its fin tail made it a more efficient swimmer than modern crocodilian species. Several species of Metriorhynchids are known from Europe. It has been hypothesis that niche partitioning enabled several species of crocodiliforms to coexist. The top predators appear to be Dacosaurus, which were large, short-snout species with serrated teeth. The long-snout Crocosaurus would have fed mostly on fish.